Today I'd like to show you my feather tool. I developed a feather tool because I wanted to be able to machine nice feathers and I had tried quite a lot of templates but I found that they didn't work awfully well for me. They never seemed to be the right size or they never seemed to be the right shape. The template itself is very easy to understand. It's got a curve on this side which is half a heart and it's got a curve on that side which is half a heart but much smaller. On the piece of paper I'm going to use today I'll use the smaller heart but you can draw any shape you like. So you can feather a circle, a rectangle, a square, whatever, and it will feather it exactly the way you want it with all different kinds of sections in it. You have six different shapes that you can choose from. So I'm just going to draw half a heart and then put the other half on. It's essential that you start with the spine of the feather. So you do need to be aware that you're going to put the feather sections on outside that spine. So my feather will be wider than the original spine and you do need to bear that in mind when you're planning it. I'm drafting on photocopying paper today because it's easy for you to see. But normally, if I was going to use this as a quilting design, I would draft on greaseproof paper and then I would machine through the greaseproof paper and tear the paper off. So there's no need at all to be marking your quilt and obviously then no need to be removing the markings afterwards. Once you've got your heart shape drawn, you've got choices of these different feather section shapes. If the spine that you've drawn has a point on it, for example, if you were going to use a rectangle or a square, and here I've drawn a double spine around, you always start feathering from the point. So all you do, it's really simple, is you put whatever size you have chosen from these so that the little point on the end of the feather shape matches the point on your spine. So if I line that one up there, and the first one you always draw a complete feather section. Thereafter, you're not going to draw a complete section, you're going to draw from the spine to the top of the previous section that you've drawn. The little tail here will always take care of itself and you needn't worry about it. So now if I wanted to use the same size section again, I would draw from the spine to the top of the feather. And to make sure I'm more accurate, I'm going to put my glasses on. So in this case, I'm going to draw three of size one, and then I've decided I'm going to get bigger, so I'm going to draw three of size two. There's no special formula in what I'm using. You just choose whatever you fancy. Now we've got six feather sections and I would carry on adding feather sections and changing the size if I want. And here I'm getting larger as I go around until you've got the design feathered all the way around. The next thing you've got to do is to do the other side. And all you do is flip it over. But you must remember that the inside is a smaller space than the outside. So these are kind of more squashed up as they go around. And the tail of the section will not always match the tail of the sections that go around the outside. But you don't need to worry about that. It will feather itself absolutely beautifully all the way around. And you can decide to make them get bigger on the inside if you want to. And you can play with your design. And so you'd carry on adding around like that. And so here, this feather design has been completed all the way around using the large size. So it gives you quite a good size for a cushion or for a quilt block or for the center of a quilt. The other thing that you can use is in any of your designs, you have a purse full of technical design tools. And so you can put a pound coin or a two pound coin or a euro or a dime or whatever you want and you can use any kind of circles that will join in. Equally well, if you take any of the feather sections here and you draw from about two thirds of the way around down to the point and then you flip it over and you match up the lines, you have got six different size heart shapes that you can use at tops and bottoms of designs. And equally well, 
If you go from the point on any drop shape to midway at the bottom, and then you flip it over and you do the other side, you've got six different size drop shapes that you can use. So you can expand your design that way. Here, I have used a heart shape here, and I have used drop shapes here just to complete the design. And I've used the small sections going along here, gradually increase the size using the large ones coming round the top, and then the same on the other side. And I've used nearly all the smaller sections on the inside where the space was less. If I was going to use this design, I would now pin this onto my three layers, my sandwich, my quilt top fabric, my batting, wadding, and then my um, backing fabric. And when they were all pinned together, I would machine through the whole lot and then tear off the greaseproof paper and my design would be complete. And you have two choices when you're actually doing the stitching on this. Many people would start here and they would go around here and then they would go up here and go around there. And now here, this bit would be a double stitching line, as would that bit. And many people prefer that method, so you'd get areas of the feather that would be double. Personally, I'm not very keen on that. So what I do is I go from the bottom here and I do the first section, and then I do two or three little stitches which are very close together and I call those a full stop and they anchor the thread there and then I would jump and I would go to here two or three stitches as a full stop and go round to there two or three stitches and a full stop and then I would jump to there and do the same thing full stop go round full stop jump to there full stop and so on all the way round and then when I'd finished, I'd clip these loops that are there. And I'd only have single stitching all the way around. If it was designed for a cushion or something that you wouldn't see the back, I wouldn't bother cutting the back loops. But if it was for a quilt, I could quite safely and happily clip the loops on the back of the quilt, so long as my little full stops, two or three stitches close together but not on top of each other, they will be my little full stop and anchor all my threads. So it isn't essential that you would have to thread all the ends in. You can use these designs in lots of different ways. Here is, again, a heart that I've done with a smaller size that's exactly the same, with a small heart here and a 10p piece here, and the smaller sections going all the way around the outside and the inside. Here is a rectangle and a double spine on this one. Again, if you start from the ends and you go to the end, start on the point and go to the end all the way round, and then one extra little section here on the corners will just complete your design for you. You can do designs in all sorts of ways to your own requirements. These are just following straight lines with a 10p piece or a pound piece on the end. They will follow circles beautifully you can play around using um, straight lines and right angles, just fitting them in symmetrically. This kind of design is also very easy because when I find the tool itself, there we are, I didn't know what I'd done with it. You'll see that these sections here are just going along the large curve here and then feathering it up with a pound coin here and three pound coins there and a bit of cross hatching in the middle. Circles of any size you can follow. Prince of Wales feather is another one. And if you just go around either of the curves and then feather up the size, the other thing, each of these little feather sections has been designed so that the smaller ones will fit inside the larger ones. And so you can create double quilting lines and make a more interesting feather. And I have just added a little triangle on the base to finish off my feather there. There are lots of designs on the packet. I've called it a workshop in a bag. It gives you all the instructions and they're very easy to look at these designs and see this is just a half circle feathered in both ways, an oval, 
the heart I've talked about, squares, the Prince of Wales feather. And on the back, this kind of whirly gig feather, again, is just a small circle in the middle and then going around the curves, whichever side you choose, on the way around and feathering up those and that will give you a much, much bigger design. Making composite designs from a square here in the middle and then using the curves on the tool to add to it. Just three straight lines in a triangle. A straight line down, this would be a right angle with a small circle in the middle and feathering around. So you can feather any kind of shape that you like. When you come to the needlework, this particular one has had an automatic stitch done all the way along the spine in the centre and that gives it a little more definition and then just straight stitching around the outside and I do this with the feed dog down because it's easier with free machining to be able to go around the curves and again another line of automatic stitching finishes it off on the outside. Here we've got another design which has got a single spine going through the middle of it and the design has been feathered as I've shown you and then on the outside an extra line has been added all the way around it. In this one, applique has been used and so I have inserted a coloured piece of fabric between my three layer sandwich and my greaseproof paper, machined around all the greaseproof paper lines, torn it off and then cut away around the blue-green fabric to leave the applique fabric inside the feather. And then I finished it off with a little bit of gold um, satin stitch. There's another one here, which was machined, and then my granddaughter painted it in. So you can see the spine doesn't have to be a single line, it can be however you want it to be. And finally, two cushions that are here. And both of those are just using the same idea in different ways with pound coins on the edges of them. Again, a little bit of glitter, a little bit of bling has been added here. I'm always up for that. And um, it just a little bit of uh, stippling in, inside the pound coin sections just brings it more to life. And then to completely finish off, if you don't want to go onto feathers, you can play around with a tool and you can do really nice flower designs with it. So here we have a fuchsia, a lupin. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that one is, but it's a very nice flower design. Christmas tree. Uh, you can play with all sorts of designs. They don't have to start and end with feathers. It's great fun and it's very easy and I hope you enjoy using it. <laughs>